Okay, so basically there's this new thing, and when I say new, I mean it's like cutting, bleeding edge, man. It's it's brand new. Um, it's, it's not even out yet. It's so new. And it is called React Server Components. Is that right? Server Components? React Server Components, I believe. Anyway, I was just scrolling down GitHub when I noticed that Dan Abramov had starred a repository, and I was like, hey, what is this? And I clicked on it. And by the way, if you don't know who Dan Abramov is, you should follow Dan on Twitter. He's super famous and pretty much anything he follows or talks about is important in, in my opinion, in what I do here uh, on my channel. But anyway, so I, uh, I, I checked it out and basically there was this video and I'm going to go to, I'm going to pull all this stuff up. So I ended up on this repo and this is the repo that Dan Abramov starred and I noticed that there was this Basically, it's a demo. It says server components demo. And I was like, huh, that sounds interesting. Let me check it out. So I click it. Here I am. And I go to this, what is this thing? I click this. It is a link to a video. You go to the video, almost hour long video. It's 57 minutes long. And it's this introduction by Dan Abramov where he talks about the potential, basically problems that he wished were solved that were not currently solved in a easy way. If I bring up the diagram here that he was talking about in the beginning, he talks about the the idea that you, you know, apps can be cheap, apps can be good, apps can be fast, and you can only choose two because having all three is, is impossible, but this is all theory, of course. Um, and so do you want to choose good and cheap? Do you want to choose good and fast? Or do you want to choose cheap and fast? And... He starts talking about some issues with how to make all three a possibility. He starts talking about asynchronous requests and how, for example, let's say you have a, a React application or really any application in general so that you can kind of understand the problem. It could be any type of application. Let's say you have an app where you have four different components and when you load the app, it only loads one component and this component goes out to an API and it gets some sort of data. And depending on the data it it gets, it renders one of two components. Like maybe it goes out and figures out whether or not the user is authenticated. And then if the user is authenticated, it shows the dashboard. And if they're not authenticated, it shows a login screen. Well, it has to do this asynchronous request that takes some time. So if you're thinking in a graph where the x-axis is time, it's frozen and it's like, okay, well, nothing's happening right now because we're going out to the internet. We're getting some information. Okay, now we got the information. So now we can load the uh, the component and then the JavaScript runs, which is super fast, super fast compared to the asynchronous stuff. But then now it loads, say, the dashboard. Now the dashboard's loaded. Well, in the dashboard is like a calendar or something. And that calendar is a component that also goes out to the internet, Go gets goes and gets some data. So now... In the beginning, it's slow, it loads really fast, and then now it's slow again because there's another component that's going out and getting a bunch of data. And then let's say once you, you know, once that loads, it also shows another component that also has to go out and get some more information. So you end up with this waterfall kind of like um, asynchronous slowdown of internet. Anyway, that the speed of how it's loading looks like a waterfall. Now, you can build your app in such a way where that's not actually a problem. However, it can be difficult and also not exactly the way you would want to design an application a lot of the times because you may not want to have to put all of your asynchronous logic inside of a Reduxy type of thing or context, shared context or something like that or an Angular like a service because honestly, that can be a pain in the butt. Maybe sometimes you just want to write an app where each component handles its own asynchronous logic and you know fetch logic in its own state, all encapsulated inside of a component. And then in an I ideal world, yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. So keep that in mind. And this somehow solves that apparently, potentially. Now I'm brand new to this. I literally just found out about this today. So I don't fully know all of the concepts here, but what I can tell you is that after watching the video, it's left me with a lot of questions. For example, 
the very first thing that popped into my head when I saw this was like, okay, well, what about Next.js? Because the concept of things like Next.js is this idea of server-side rendering where you render the component on the server and then it ends up in the browser. But the difference is in something like Next.js and in server-side rendering, you're loading the component on the server and then it gets served to the client. And it has like pre-rendered stuff that was already rendered on the server inside of the component. However, it still re-renders in the client. So it's really rendering twice. This is apparently the concept of like, okay, this is only going to be rendered in the server. And you can say, I want these components to only be rendered on the server. And I want these components to only be rendered in the client, which has a really powerful side effect. And that side effect is bundle sizes being smaller because check this out. Let's say you have 20 dependencies in your project and 10 of them you can isolate to just server side components. If that's the case, then those 10 dependencies don't need to be loaded into the browser, which means that those 10 dependencies do not need to be included in your bundle size that's downloaded into the browser. Um, which means that the overall file size can be reduced drastically. In fact, some applications you could <laughs> you could somehow write them to where all of the dependencies are rendered on the server, and you could even have no dependencies on the browser side, making your bundle size incredibly small. So definitely some powerful stuff that we're looking at here. And as you saw, moving back into this, it says React server components are still in research and development. We are sharing this work in the spirit of transparency and to get initial feedback from the React community. There will be plenty of time for that. So don't feel like you have to catch up right now. So in other words, this is brand spanking new, man. Like this could change drastically. <laughs> so, and, and a, there's probably a lot more to be explained. So I'm probably going to end up having to do a follow-up video just to talk about the technical side of all of this and probably a tutorial in the future. But I just wanted to talk about it a little bit now because it was very interesting and kind of exciting to see that something this drastically new is being kind of boiled together. So let's go back to this and have a look. Let's dive a little bit into the demo here. And as you can see on the left, there are components with this .server.js. And then there's other components with this .client.js. And these .client.js files are clearly just rendered on the client. And then these .server.js components are clearly just rendered on the server. Okay, so what is confusing me right now is there are certain components in here that don't have either of those in it. It doesn't have server or client written in it. So it makes me wonder, are these rendered on both? Are they only rendered on the client? What is the result here? So Lauren is inside of sidebar, uh, sidebar note.js and talking about importing a client component into the server, which makes me assume that this is a server component. So if that's the case, then you may not, it may be that the default in this particular case is a server component. If you don't include a dot client or dot server dot JS, it just kind of automatically is a server component, or I could be just totally horribly wrong here. I could look at the source code. Let's take a look. Please load. Sidebar, what was that sidebar note? Sidebar note.js. Interesting, because there's a sidebar note.js and there's a sidebar note.client.js. <coughs> ah. So, right off the bat, I wanna see if there's a difference between these two. There's a drastic difference between these two, and it looks like they're they're not importing the the are they importing the client version into okay so they're importing the client version into this which hmm 
Does that mean that this component, and th this is totally me just exploring and just trying to understand this and talking about it, by the way. Um, I wanted to do some more of these types of videos on this channel. But yeah, so it looks like if you don't put a dot server or a dot client, then it's rendered on both perhaps, or you can combine the functionality of both a client and a uh, server component or something like that. I don't know if it's explained in this video or not, but basically the sidebar note.js, I don't know why that's a server component. Is it because that if you don't specify client or server, it is just a server component? I don't know. That's not explained yet. Um, I tried to run this project locally. Unfortunately, I'm on Windows, and when I tried to run this thing on Windows, I had to change the way that the env vars are being injected into the app. Managed to get past that, but then I ran into other problems. Managed to get past those problems, but then I ran into even more problems. And I mean, the instructions on getting this thing to run were as simple as, literally, it just says, in, oh, you'll have to have Node.js greater than or equal to 14.9 in order to run this demo. So I do have, I think I have NVM on this machine. So NVM install, and then that specific version, or I think I could do like, yeah, let's just do that. I'm gonna try just this one more thing. If this doesn't work, then it's not worth it. So what do you guys think in the comments? Anything, uh, any opinions on server components? Excited, not excited, think it's hype, maybe think it's going to be revolutionary. What do you think? All right, moving on forward here. NVM use 14.9. It did the thing again where it asked for administrative privileges. I don't know if the screen went black when it did that, but anyway, NPM start. Actually, let me quickly switch back my build.js discard those changes and hope that it works. Yeah, that's definitely not working. So yeah, like I said, I tried to get this thing to work. It was supposed to just be as simple as NPM install, NPM start. Now I'm particularly, I'm on the, the fork that this is talking about where I don't need the database, where it's got a, um, I think this is it. Yeah. Where it has a db.js file in here with all of the data, like hard coded. So I don't need that. I know that's not the problem. So, but anyway, for some reason I can't get this thing to run on windows. Probably maybe there's an issue for that. Failed to build. Interesting. Windows 10. <laughs> they had the same problem as me. That's. Well, they had a similar problem. It's a little bit different, but anyway, point is, this is brand new. So anyway, I really just wanted to kind of go through that and talk about the fact that this thing exists. And I don't think that this really is going to be super revolutionary. My honest opinion is that it's probably going to be very helpful in certain situations, but it's probably not going to be extremely revolutionary as as rev revolutionary as something like um graphql which is a more generalized way to to handle things because i mean depending on the way you architect your applications you may not even you may be able to solve the problems that this solves uh in different ways however i do think that the idea of having all of the dependencies that you don't need to run on the front end if you can isolate them to components that run only on the back end you could seriously reduce your bundle size because being a web developer one of the nerdy things that we all get into is how can we make our bundle sizes smaller and this will clearly help with that yeah but you know let me know what you all think in the comments to let me know just like am i missing something is there something about this that is actually amazing that i'm just not fully wrapping my head around and obviously I'll probably make a follow-up video in the future but uh yeah hope you all have a wonderful day